UK Parliament calls for sanctioning of Nigerian officials and anyone involved in alleged infringement of human rights abuses during Lekki shootings. And court remands Senator Ali Ndume in prison for failing to produce Abdul Rashid Maina for trial. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayodi Ladeni. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. The Nigerian government has asked American-based cable news network CNN to revert its investigative report on the Lekki shootings. In a letter addressed to CNN, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Muhammad, the federal government has stated that it has legal rights to take action to prevent CNN from aggravating the hashtag answers crisis. And in the United Kingdom, the UK Parliament has called on the British government to commence investigation into human rights abuses perpetrated by the Nigerian government and security agencies on citizens. It also demanded the UK government to impose sanctions on officials who were found guilty. The sanctions range from visa bans to asset freezing as contained in an e-petition signed by a total of 220,330 people. Joining us to discuss this, we have uh, Oponabo in Kotaria, who is a JP, that's the Justice for Peace, and also maybe I should call him a law graduate because I don't know why he refused to go to law school. You will tell us more about that. Good evening, Mr. Inkotaria. Hello, Mr. Inkotaria, are you there? Okay, while we're, we're trying to connect with him, let me also introduce my second guest for you tonight. I'm talking about Ladipo Johnson, a legal practitioner. Good evening, Mr. Johnson. Good evening. Yeah, good to have you again. I remember you were here in the morning uh, talking to us about the news. But let's look at... Uh, it in a more holistic manner now. Let me start with you, uh, Ladipo Johnson, while we're trying to reconnect with uh, Inkotaria. Now, quite a lot of interpretations have been given to these, and one of them is, um, why will BBC not stand with, uh, I mean, a UK parliament not looked at the report from BBC and what is their take on this issue? T put us through how this is done and how this is acceptable in another climb. Is that for me? Yes, I just, yeah, as you said in your introduction, the, um, there was an e-petition, electronic petition, that had almost a quarter of a million signatories. Now, um, this went before the parliament and they discussed it. Now, this, this is a normal procedure. And... Um, they have, uh, as I said, they discussed it and said to the government, especially the foreign secretary, to, um, to look into it, consider sanctions, targeted sanctions against people who have been found or who are found to have breached um, um, provisions of human rights or the human rights of um, the protesters or people um, in the country, in Nigeria. Now, this is, um, as I said, it's a, it's a normal thing. It just goes to show us that the world is now a global village. It is a global village, and governments and countries have to remain accountable, not just to their citizens, but to each other. You mentioned why um, you thought, why they would have used... Um, May, they didn't use the report of the BBC. I think what would have happened is that they would have um, looked at um, various reports, including intelligence from their intelligence agencies. 
and other countries' intelligence agencies, the Israelis, the uh, United States, CIA, and what have you, other African countries. Because all these agencies, a lot of them work together. So they will have a more complete, more complete um, Overview. knowledge okay. of what has happened okay. than, than we on ground would. Okay. Ladiko Johnson, I, I, I thank you for that uh, opening remark. But before we continue this conversation, uh, let's take a listen to some of the sound bites or one of the sound bites from the debate. Then we'll come back. Nigerian government and its security services to uphold human rights and the rule of law, to investigate all incidents of brutality, illegal detentions and the use of excessive force, and to hold those responsible to account. We will closely monitor the judicial panel of inquiries and continue to advocate for investigations into police brutality. The government will consider its options as the panel's work progresses. The government would also continue to work with the Nigerian government and international and civil society partners to improve the accountability and transparency of the Nigerian police for the benefit of all Nigerians. Okay, and that was uh, a member of the parliament arguing the reason for this uh, petition. I, I understand that Inkotaria is bad. So, Mr. Punabo, Inkotaria, let's look at uh, the possibility of, you know, that kind of e-petition gaining that kind of attention from a UK parla parliament. How, you know, how... I'm looking at the veracity that will make them consider this. Tell us how this process runs and why this petition is being given this kind of attention that it's getting. Well, uh, thank you. Um, talking of the validity, you are talking of uh, evidential sufficiency. And I think it is on that premise that they made their report. We are living in a digital age where even what you do in your bedroom, there's a possibility that what you do in your bedroom could be leaked. And so you are talking of CNN that has all the gadgets and all it takes to carry out, even when it has to do with investigative journalism. More so, this is something that happened in the open. It wasn't something that happened in the secret. It wasn't surreptitiously done. And so they had a reporter there According to them, they saw that they had somebody they relied on, according to them. And after that, they also visited the local Tunko, that is where the place happened to stay, and the local delicto, that is the place of wrongdoing, and even sought uh, interview with government officials, even though they were at the ball. Now, this is not something that, like Lai Mohammed said, I listened to. Um, the, the rhetorics of Lai Mohammed, and it's so, it's so shameful. It's just for just an enemy of logic and reasoning. Now, we have Nigerians who are also recording. We have Nigerians who are recording this event. So in situations like that, it's not like a studio uh, program where you have to do a dry run, after which you now perfect it and aid. These things are recorded as they were happening, simultaneously as they were happening. So which other proof will you need? Which other authenticity will you want? How, how, how else will you want to validate a situation like that? It's like somebody who witnessed two fighting. And you say, oh, how can you validate that? This one slapped this or this one did not slap that. It is stupid. It's quite ridiculous. Because you saw them like The person that will ask the question is somebody that was never there. And so we have these things as the shootings went on. The, and all the crises went on, they were recorded simultaneously and aired simultaneously. So if you talk of evidentiary sufficiency, if you have enough to bolster their assertion. Having said, said this, let me also note that apart from even being there, even if they weren't there, you can get these clips from people. And most of these clips went viral. There are no clips that were doctors. Dr. Zlai Mohammed for a, a statement. They are not things that we are doctors. So how else are you going to ascertain the veracity of such things? How else? And it is surprising that Lai Mohammed. Open number. 
I, I want you to, uh, that topic is also very, very valid. It's part of this discussion. But in pointedly, I want you to look at um, this issue being discussed at UK Parliament. Uh, do you see any situation of infringing on our sovereignty? Well, 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 uh, <laughs> that, that, that reminds us of the uh, proverb of the hen, which said that um, when the chicks are taken and it cries out, it, it does not necessarily mean that the chicks will be brought back. It just wants the world to know. That is, that is one, and I think it's on that uh, 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 premise that probably they cried out. Having said that, Nigerians, you know, there is this bewildering frustration and corroding bitterness in the country. Nigerians have lost faith in a government that is vaccinated, a government that is schizophrenic in its personality, a government, as we also saw as events recently, in the issue of approbating and reprobating, where right? they are setting up judicial commissions of inquiry and at the same time prosecuting the South uh, 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 protesters. So this is a government with lead, with mouth, dropping with words of interpretation okay. and notification. And so Nigerians have lost faith in the government okay. and they impugn the possibility of having justice. So they cried out to the UK Parliament. Okay, you put up a... I, I, I think I got your point, uh, but let me quickly also listen to uh, Ladipo Johnson. We're looking at, yes, it might be a political statement. It might be seen from the political angle where the opposition will say, oh, this government is not doing well. But what have we considered the issue of our sovereignty? You see what happened in America. America is solving its own issue, even when some will say that, why is Trump stressing this issue of election? And they are solving the problem. So why should we, in this case, the people that wrote the petitions are actually based in UK. So do they transfer that issue that will now affect our sovereignty in any form? Ladipo Johnson. Like my colleague rightly said. Ladipo, this is for Ladipo Johnson now. I don't know whether you can hear me very oh, well. Oh, I see. OK. Is that well, um, I think I got part of the, just part of the question. But I think I have the gist of what you were saying. Okay. Basically, even if the petition was written by people outside, most of the, a lot of the people who signed the petition were Nigerians. Whether they're in diaspora or whether they're here, they have a say. And let me tell you, sir, even if no Nigerian wrote a petition, Nigeria has about 200 million people. The last thing any Western government would want is crisis in the, within the Nigerian population. You can imagine Niger, Nigerian refugees moving across West Africa or anywhere. It will cause so much chaos. So the, 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 the whole issue, of course, we look at NSARS, but it is much bigger than that. We all know that. It is much bigger than that. And so... It is a way to look at things. And if you um, recall what the lady was saying, the member of parliament, they said they are working even with the Nigerian government, that they should investigate. They're monitoring the tribunals to make sure that there is the rule of law and to make sure that um, it isn't like jungle justice. Someone or some people must be held accountable. So it is, um, there's, no, there's nothing funny about it being discussed either in the British Parliament or before the European Parliament or before the United States or anywhere. The Nigerian government would do the same. For okay. instance, we got involved when there was some problem in Mali recently. It is a global village. Okay. And if our government, especially our Minister for Information, does not want people or other countries poking their noses in what we're doing, then they should behave properly. Okay. They should uh, respect the Constitution. Okay. Uh, uh, just for record, I like to say this on, 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 uh, for record, that um, uh, no one is actually taking this issue for granted, as serious as it is, but I'm, we are staying on the legality to look at um, 
I hope we won't get to a level where we will be recolonized because in our elections now, we have UK, we have EU always threatening to sanction us. We even have US always threatening to sanction us. So I'm asking this time around that where do we draw the line so that we are still careful not to lose our sovereignty? Open up. Okay. Uh, the line is already drawn. The sovereignty of any nation is in fact, and uh, I don't think anybody wants to tamper with the sovereignty okay. of any nation. However, however, like my brother in the uh, uh, Ladipo said, it's a global village. No man is an island. Nigeria was involved in Mali and has been involved in every, many other African countries. And so if, if it is being served, the very dish, it serves others. There is nothing wrong with that. And don't also forget, apart from just being Nigerians running to this other nation, apart from that, you know, justice anywhere, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And so you cannot sit, even if you as a father, you cannot kill your own child because that child is yours and will go scot free. You can't do that with impunity. And that is what that is why it's a global village. That is why the world is right. Even in America, look at the Donald Trump issue. Most world leaders actually did criticize Donald Trump for his actions. So you cannot, because uh, it is now in the turn of Nigeria, you are going to talk of sovereignty. No. You don't, in administration of justice, you don't charity. What is good for the goods is good for the Ganda. So if Nigeria can also criticize any other country for what it tells bad leadership, although I strongly believe that it doesn't even have that locus. But if it does, then it should also be ready to Open receive number. criticism from every other country. Not necessarily the sanctions. Of course, the UK law does not even permit the issue of sanctions against the country per se, but against individuals. Because when you carry out sanctions, and impose sanctions against the country, you are, by extension, going to punish this very citizen for whom you are trying to protect. And so it will be counterproductive. So they do it against the individuals. And that is what we are trying to do. And this is also to enlighten the world, to bring within the cognizance of the world that this is what is going on in this country. Look at some have even left the country for asylum, political asylum. Okay, the but number, I, and before I go to Ladipo, I just want to stay with you to look at uh, the issue of ICC. That is acceptable that we, we had a case in Cote d'Ivoire where the former president, you know, was made to face justice. So um, isn't that stronger than, you can imagine what they have been threatening of, and this is also actually a big deal here in this part of the world, where they will say, oh, there will be a visa ban, they will not allow them do this, they will not allow them do that, and we know that can really be a big deal. But shouldn't we concentrate our energy on the issue of ICC for anyone found guilty? That's more legal, don't you think? No, no problem about that. Like I rightly said, the sanctions will not be imposed on a nation, but on individuals, so to speak. So if they say no visa ban, because most Nigerians, what we do, especially our leader, that's why I say what we practice is plutocracy. Our leader, when they steal this money and rig this havoc, they run away, they run out of the country. And only the plebeians, in quote, the poor people that suffer. And so they said no. You cannot have refuge any other place except your country. So if you lose your treasury, you will remain there to suffer the consequences. Okay. Now, that is exactly what they do. But having said that, this does not in any way prevent any legal, any institution in the ICC. It doesn't stop it. It's a process. As we are discussing, somebody might take that off. Okay, thank you so much. Somebody might take that off because, because a lot of okay. people... Uh, okay, uh, Ladipo, let's quickly come home now beyond what the UK may do, what the parliament may also do. Let's come back home and do a bit of um, soul searching. Now, we've had even big personalities being killed. We've, we're talking about Funshaw Williams. We're talking about Bola Ige. We're talking about uh, uh, Dele Giwa. We're talking about quite a lot of people. And as we speak, we can't say this is how they died or who killed them. So people seem to have lost hope on our justice system. So, and trust me, I want to believe that the help will not come from abroad. What do we need to do f from day one on how to make sure that we have confidence in our justice system? Ladipo, first. 
Okay. Well, um, that is um, a riddle wrapped in a mystery in an enigma. <laughs> the Nigerian problem is something else, my brother. Um, there's so many ways to look at it, so many places to begin. But suffice to say that, um, suffice to say that most Nigerian public servants, civil servants, politicians, or appointees do not believe in the constitution of Nigeria. Hmm. They believe that they owe their allegiance to the person that has appointed them, hmm. either a Mr. President or Mr. Governor or Mr. Local Government Chairman, not to the people. Now, as long as you have that, it will continue to be difficult for the rule of law to pervade and grow within the society. Hmm. We have the same problem with the fourth, um, with, the, um, with, with um, your profession. The journalists do not have the freedom, I dare say, they do not have the freedoms they had some two, some three, four, five years ago. So it's a, it, it, it is a problem that is there that seems to be on the increase. How do we solve it ourselves? Linking it to your former question without being recolonized. Unfortunately, we need help hmm. because the system, a system, look at the NSAS. You have someone earning, say, 50,000 Naira. You give him a gun that is more expensive than what he's earning. Hmm. He has two, three children. He cannot cater for them. And you ask him not to be bitter. When he stops a young gentleman or young girl at a... Um, checkpoint and sees them with an iPhone, an iPad or something. So you see that the system, okay. I know I've gone further than your question, hmm. the system, there's so many things. What you succeeded the doing... the most important thing is we must be serious. Ladipo Johnson, what you have succeeded doing is to let me know that the problem is big and it's not something that can be solved in one minute response and that will be an issue that we have to look at in the coming days. In Kotaria, probably you have some quick solution in the next 30 seconds. Can you help us out? Okay, um, a quick one. I think our, most, our problem is moral lag. You know, when you have people, there must be a revolution of values. When you have people with distorted perception of life in positions of authority, that is what you get. Hmm. And so we have to ensure that for, um, from now on, just like the Enters Prostats have said, we ensure that those with credibility that are also going to be there in the image of Nigerians are the ones to be elected. Now, how do we go about that? It's a major problem because it has to do with finance. And only these very venal politicians have the money. And that's why they keep... Okay. <laughs> remaining in office. However, the major problem right now, as we speak, is that Nigerians must not resign themselves to fit. Okay. The end SARS has come, it has not ended, it is going to continue, and at the end of the day, provided we are not daunted, free shall be reborn under Thank the you so much. of Nigerians that really want the Thank continuous you so much. existence of this country. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, Opunabo in Kotaria, uh, a public affairs analyst. Thank you for that sense of hope that if the young people can say we can end impunity, we can end police brutality, that means there's an area of hope that uh, this country can be fixed. Once again, thank you so much. Ladipo Johnson, trust me, this is a conversation we will continue from time to time. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you too. Thank you so much.
Okay, and to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, how legal is the imprisonment of Senator Ali Undume over his inability to produce expansion balls, Abdul Rashid Maina? This is all for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.